So I'm going to talk to you guys about cryptographic oracle-based conditional payments. And uh, to do that, I'm going to first talk to you about what conditional payments are uh, in the blockchain context, since this uh, session is also about blockchain. And uh, to do that, I'm going to introduce uh, Cristiano Ronaldo and Lionel Messi, who want to place a bet. And this bet, the tech savvy, so they want to place this bet using the Bitcoin blockchain. Okay. And uh, what do they say? They, what Cristiano says, is Ronaldo says is, hey, if Argentina wins the World Cup, uh, I'm going to send you one Bitcoin. And uh, Messi is like, okay, cool. Uh, how does this work? Um, mm. uh, right. So uh, the idea is, like, if you, if you don't know what a Bitcoin transaction looks like, don't worry. They, they're going to help you. Um, basically, a transaction is just a a coin, a coin that is owned by, say, Ronaldo. And uh, to spend the coin, what he needs to do is just specify the uh, recipient of this coin, which is, say, now Messi. And he also needs to include a signature on this transaction. Uh, now, if, uh, and if this, you know, this uh, transaction with a signature, if this is posted to the Bitcoin blockchain, then it's done. Then the transaction is complete and, uh, you know, uh, money is transferred from Ronaldo to Messi. But uh, sure, Ronaldo says, hey, I cannot, uh, you know, directly give you the coin and the signature. Because if I do, you know, irrespective of the outcome, Messi could potentially just uh, post this transaction on the blockchain and claim all the winning. So what does Ronaldo do? So do? He says, I'm only going to give you the transaction without the signature. And the signature I'm going to give you at the end of the out. out. Um, right. Uh, okay, let's see. Right. So now, you know, the World Cup final day has happened and uh, the outcome is that Argentina wins the World Cup. Um, wow. And uh, Messi says, all right, send me your signature. And at this point, what does Ronaldo do? Ronaldo just says bye and disappears. And uh, so you'll see that, you know, this, this is a, a mutually distrustful problem. That is, both parties, you know, cannot trust each other. So in one case, you know, if if Messi received the signature before the outcome was announced, he could potentially, you know, just uh, push on the blockchain and take the money without even winning the World Cup. On the other hand, if he waits until uh, he, you know, uh, until the outcome is completed, Ronaldo can just simply not set in the signature and, uh, you know, uh, not ha not honor the bet. So this is what we do in this work. Um, we want to somehow give a protocol for secure conditional payments, where an oracle, and I'm going to introduce and tell you what this oracle is, uh, can attach to some real world outcome. Okay. And in our case, this would be announcing that, uh, hey, the World Cup was won by Argentina. All right. So, what is the, uh, the setting? Uh, so, as I mentioned before, we have Ronaldo and Messi. These are our two uh, mutually distrusting parties. And we have an oracle, which I'm going to sh show as FIFA. And FIFA is going to announce that, hey, uh, Argentina has won the World Cup. And uh, the idea is that Ronaldo is going to first create this uh, transaction, which if, um, you know, s spent by, or if, if it is submitted by Messi, he's going to uh, get the money. But for that, he needs a signature. Now, instead of giving the full signature, what is Ronaldo going to do? He's going to lock the signature up inside, in, in some particular way, and give this locked signature as well as the uh, transaction to Messi. And at a later point of time, uh, we will have the Oracle, which is FIFA, uh, attached to this outcome to say that, hey, the World Cup was won by Argentina, gives a signature, and then Messi can use this signature from the Oracle to somehow unlock this transaction signature and then broadcast it to the Bitcoin network and claim uh, the funds. All right, so this is this is how our uh, how the message transmit uh, how the messages are like sent to each other in our setting. And uh, now I'm going to first tell you about what are the security requirements we need in the setting. Uh, and then I'll show you how we actually instantiate uh, uh, this protocol. Okay. So, okay. So let's see. Let's first see what can go wrong. So the first thing is, uh, you know, if Ronaldo can always just send some garbage value instead of the encrypted signature, right? Like uh, there is, it's encrypted. There's no way for Messi to know, oh, is this, is this a signature or not? So at a later point of time, when you know Messi waits for the outcome, tries to decrypt it using the attestation, 
he might just receive some garbage value. And this is pointless at this point of time because, you know, the outcome has already happened and uh, Ronaldo can just sleep. Uh, yes. Uh, all right. So this, so to prevent this, we call this property verifiability, which is to say that given uh, just the transaction and this locked signature, uh, the receiver or Messi is able to verify that, hey, this transaction looks good. Like this, uh, the encrypted uh, signature is valid and I can use this at a later point of time to um, uh, spend or to use to use this transaction, right? Uh, so we call this verifiability. Uh, the next property that we need is one wayness. And uh, what is one wayness? In uh, one wayness, we require that without re receiving this attestation from the oracle, uh, this party, the receiving party, should not be able to unlock this uh, signature, right? Uh, and that, that, that's all we require from one minus. And uh, finally, we have distributed trust, which just says that we might have that uh, the two parties don't, um, uh, you know, trust one particular uh, entity, one particular oracle, maybe like FIFA, and they can basically distribute trust amongst so many oracles. And we could even have some kind of threshold policy here where maybe three out of four um, oracles need to attest to an outcome. And with that, they're able to MSC is able to unlock this transaction signature. Okay, cool. So just to uh, go over the security guarantees again, uh, verifiability, which means, which requires that just by looking at the transaction and this encrypted uh, signature, you can guarantee, you're guaranteed that this is a valid ciphertext. Um, one minus just implies that you cannot get the signature without the attestation. And finally, you were able to distribute trust amongst multiple oracles. Okay, so far so good. Um, how do we get this? How do we achieve uh, our, um, you know, how do we achieve this uh, uh, protocol? Uh, the idea is that we uh, introduce this new cryptographic primitive called uh, verifiable witness encryption based on threshold signatures. And uh, I'll go over, I'm not sure this is visible, but I'll go over each of this, uh, each of the, you know, entities, elements in this, uh, uh, you know, primitive. Okay, so what is witness encryption? So in witness encryption, just consider there's a language L with some, you know, with some corresponding relation R. Uh, and the idea is that with a statement in this language, you're able to encrypt a message M. Okay, and you, you get this nice ciphertext. And to decrypt this ciphertext, you need a witness that satisfies this relation. Okay, that corresponds to this theorem and then satisfies the relation. And you're able to decrypt it and get back the original message. Now, I'll give you an example. And this is something that we will use in our uh, uh, protocol as well. Um, we So consider this language where the statement is basically a verification key and a message. And the witness is a signature. So basically, the relation says, so given a verification key and a message, if you give me a signature such that it can, it, which, is, which is on this message M, and can be verified with this verification key VK, then the relation is satisfied. So now how do we use this to encrypt our uh, messages? So you can encrypt with just the verification key and the message. And to decrypt, I just need a signature that can be verified using this verification key. All right. Uh, and you will see, like just looking forward, this message M is the transaction signature that you know Ronaldo needs to send to Messi or whatever Messi needs. Uh, to complete this transaction and post to the blockchain. Okay, so I'm going to use uh, so I'm going to use witness encryption to encrypt that signature. And if you will see, you'll see that this signature, the signature that I mentioned here, is actually the signature that comes from the Oracle uh, or FIFA, right? And uh, we can thresholdize this in the sense that if I have a statement where I have n verification keys, and uh, the witness can be any k signatures that can be verified with any k of the uh, verification keys that were specified. Um, and I just required that this K be greater than some threshold. All right. Uh, so maybe I'll... Okay, yeah. So one, one, one last thing that we also need is verifiability, which is to say that Messi should... Like I said, that right, Messi should see that, um, oh, given just a ciphertext and... You know, given just a ciphertext, it should be guaranteed that, hey, this is a valid ciphertext. And for that, all we need is that this encryption scheme is also going to output some proof and uh, this proof can be verified um, by the receiver. And to do this, we use some NISC 
cut and choose techniques which i'm not going into in this in this particular talk all right so so far so good now let's see how we can use this uh, verifiable witness encryption uh, for uh, to to achieve this oracle based conditional payments so the idea is so the first thing is ronaldo has this transaction which says okay this is to messi and uh, this is the coin that i'm going to spend the only thing missing is a signature right so what does he do he's first going to encrypt the signature using the verification key and the outcome and this verification key corresponds to that of the oracle which is fifa and computes a proof to say that hey this uh, all this uh, the encryption was done correctly and sends the coin uh, the the transaction this encrypted signature and the proof to messi messi can verify first that hey is this this uh, transaction computed correctly in the sense that he he can actually tell that okay if i uh, get a correct signature i should be able to get the transaction signature uh all right and uh, finally how do we decrypt to decrypt what we need is just that the oracle is going to sign the outcome which is to say that okay argentina won the world cup and um, with this sig this signature uh, like how how i described how the witness encryption works uh, messi is able to decrypt the transaction signature and compute the final signature to complete the transaction um so these were our techniques and one last thing that we i also we also do in our paper is we handle multiple outcomes so i just showed you the protocol to do just one outcome so there could be multiple outcomes to say okay argentina wins the world cup and argentina wins the world cup by you know 2-0 or uh, argentina wins the world cup and messi scores a goal so you can have multiple outcomes in this sense and um, one way to do this would just be to repeat the protocol n times if you have n n possible uh, outcomes uh, but in our paper what we do is we find a way to optimize this and uh, use lindel and rivers technique to amortize cut and choose so they did it for garble circuits we see that you know we can use this for uh, schemes like witness encryption as well to uh, sort of batch the proving uh, of this uh, uh, of of whatever encryptions are done uh all right so now I'd just like to you know touch on performance so we we evaluated our um, uh, the you know the computation overhead and uh, you know the communication overhead for our protocols and this is for the prover and we see that you know it takes approx 1 150 seconds for the prover to or the person who's encrypted for ronaldo to create this transaction if we have uh, 2 to the power 15 outcomes and for um, a threshold of 4 out of 7 and um, we also i would also like to say that you know we 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 we've been in communication with the bitcoin community regarding uh, this work and there have been talks about replacing you know the existing schemes which is called discrete lock contracts with uh, you know our a particular scheme which also you know just does conditional payments um yeah so if you have noticed uh, there there are uh, you know so this this uh, particular paper or this particular result uh, if if you all know like in ethereum or uh, you know some some other cryptocurrencies there is a concept of smart contracts which basically allows you to do the same thing which basically allows you to uh, in some sense have conditions and then if conditions satisfied so just to quickly compare the two uh so the first thing is that um, you know smart contracts can be are implemented or you know you can do smart contracts only on cryptocurrencies that have um that that support turing complete scripting languages like so ethereum supports solidity and whereas in our uh, scheme you can you you can use that in any cryptocurrency that exists um to that it is uh, scalable in the in the sense that if you if you want to implement this using uh, smart contracts you would have to post all the messages that, you know all the attestations from oracles everything has to be posted to the blockchain to uh for for a smart contract to implement this whereas in our thing everything is offline and only transactions you know final transactions are posted to the main chain um and regarding fungibility we see that you know smart contracts when you want to evaluate a smart contract you need to specify that hey uh, i want to invoke this smart contract so everybody can see that oh some conditional payment is being executed here whereas in our setting it looks like a regular transaction so this is not a problem at all and uh, yeah like just just like scalability i say that you know uh because somebody has to evaluate these smart contracts there's a higher cost compared to uh, our uh, setting and um so i talked about an example like you know it's a funny example with uh, you know uh, betting between ronaldo and messi uh, and of course this has some other real world applications as well 
um which is to say like just just to go over them like you know if there are disputes between companies so you could have some kind of financial adjudication where maybe a legal um judge can will will serve the purpose of the oracle um and apart from that we can have pre scheduled payments where you know you want to uh, you want to set up this payment scheme and then just pay people at the end of every month uh, for example and a couple of other uh, applications that you know have, we've mentioned in the paper and uh, yeah that's it and so in summary i'd say that you know in this uh, paper we showed how we can do oracle based conditional payment and to do that we came up with um a new cryptographic primitive called verifiable witness encryption for threshold signatures it's a mouthful <laughs> and uh, yeah and um, we show that you know yeah so there is there's a lot of future work to be done in the sense that we could um, make this much faster and we could also have potentially more complex uh, policies for the oracles rather than just you know maybe say t out of n um yeah this is my email address in case anybody has questions you can always uh, shoot me an email all right thanks Uh, just give me what's the size of the proofs uh, for any t comma uh, uh yeah so after so you have also uh, another factor which is m uh, which is the number of outputs so if you say if you agree that there is only one output uh, for one output we have n log n like even after all the batching uh, o of n log n but n is the number of uh, So I think that we have uh, n log n number of uh, 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 sentences. I think that's a follow-up question. Is that optimal, or can we just hope for it? Just to get. Yeah. yeah. So, so this is this we think is optimal. We don't know if it's optimal. Like in the sense that we use this batching technique by Lindell and Riva to already make it uh, small. And uh, so we need n at least. So I think n would be. Actually, no. I think this this should be like the most optimal way to do it. You need n at least for uh, because if you need to send n signals, and on top of that, if you want to batch proofs, uh, you you would need at least log n number of uh, proofs. But then, that's what I'm not sure. Like I, I can't tell you. Argentina versus France, and there is another bet. 
whatever. Okay, so yeah, other countries, and then there are thousands of other bets that are being made that you know FIFA will need to manage. So how how that work? Right, there are many keys, and this needs to be somewhere announced, and you know, okay. so, the, so the users will need to use. I mean, the, whoever is then writing out these these types needs to needs to do this, and you know, there's a complexity there in terms of expressing that this seems uh, crazy complex, and the burden is on the on the oracles rather than on the on the, on the parties, like in smart contracts, I think. Uh, so I think if I can answer your question, so you're saying for multiple events, um, the oracles will have to do as much work. Is that right? So for each event, an oracle will have to generate one signature. And that's, that, that's the bare minimum that an oracle has to do. And that's all the oracle has to do, actually. Like for each event. And that, that means a lot of interaction because I, if I have my event, I need to talk to the Oracle to generate the key for that event, and then someone else has another event. So, you know, I, you know, Pedro might have one event or ten events to throw at an Oracle, I have another event, you have ten others, and so on. And all right. this needs to be thrown at different Oracles to generate different different keys and then, and then uh, manage them, right? So, okay. yeah. so that's, that's what I'm talking about. That's okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So maybe maybe like it was not clear in the presentation. So the idea is that when the parties are creating these encryptions, they create it with respect to the verification key of the oracles. So oracles do not actually need different verification keys for different events. They just need one verification key be like throughout. And we just need a signature on the outcome. We just need to change the outcome or you know, depending on the event. Whatever is the outcome, we need this oracle to sign. Uh, so now I agree that for different events, the oracle will have to look at the outcome and figure out what are the outcomes. But that's it. Like if they need not interact, there's no interaction actually between the auditors and the parties at all. Like the only, only interaction would be when an auditor actually announces or attests to an event to say that, hey, this is the outcome. And this is the signature and that's the only